my job is super physical. Like I am a fitness trainer. I'm showing people how to work out all day. Isn't that enough? Right. Yeah, I've gotten that before. And that's actually a really good argument. And I used to, you know, kind of get painted into a corner thinking, wow, that's really good. You know, if this person, if they're in pain and they're tired at the end of the day and they don't have energy and they're weak and it's all these things that I think I can help with, but they're so physical already in their job, you know, it, it, it logically makes sense that they would say, well, I can't work out. I don't have the time. I don't have the physical energy. I'm already really physical. But here's the thing is that our bodies in, in, in everyday life, if you don't prescribe any fitness to it, if we don't apply some extra challenge, your body, whether you're um, relatively lethargic or you have a moderate amount of activity or you have a high amount of activity, if your only input and your only challenge to your body is your everyday life, your body adapts to that level, right? So whether you're here or here, your body will adapt to that level. And that level is that you're setting is the hardest day that you have. In other words, you'll be, you'll be addressing the needs that your body is going through and the challenges it faces on your hardest days. You'll be prepared for those hardest days, or I should say actually your average days. I said that wrong because it all gets averaged out. All of the challenges in your everyday life get averaged out. So your hardest days will feel hard because they're a little beyond the average. Does that make sense? So you will only ever be as prepared as you can be with everyday life, even if let's say you're like a carpenter, you know, cause that was one guy I was working with um, and, and having trouble conceptualizing this with. So he's going to be as fit as his everyday life, which is fitter than the average person but not, he won't be fit for his hardest day, right? So eventually he's gonna have a day harder than he's used to, and then all of a sudden that's gonna break him down. So I like to employ what I call the eclipse factor, which means that if you in the gym challenge yourself with things that are applying and, and challenging you with more strength than is required in your everyday life and more mobility that will ever be asked of you in your everyday life, and more stamina and more stability. And in other words, if you expand all of the different thresholds that your body could be challenged with, and you do that beyond, even just a little bit, beyond your hardest day in everyday life, then you will adapt to that and you'll be strong. You'll be challenged most in the gym, but then when you go to everyday life, even your hardest day will be easier than your average workout and you'll be more than prepared. In other words, you'll have more gas in the tank and you'll be more armored up against any potential injuries. So you'll be less at risk to fatigue yourself or to harm yourself at work. And then you'll have more you know, gas in your tank to go on and do it the next day. So I'm definitely liking the eclipse factor. It's a good way to explain the concept you're talking about, making sure that what you do in your fitness time makes you stronger than any of the physical challenges life is going to throw at you so that you don't end up injuring yourself kind of makes fitness pain proof, right? Right. Pain proof, injury proof. You don't want to be, in other words, barely getting by. Like if the heaviest thing you lift at your job is 50 pounds and you lift that just once a week, the practice that you've done to get to that is just the other days where you barely got by lifting 50 pounds. That doesn't sound like a sustainable plan. That's like Russian roulette right there. So it'd be better to, you know, in that analogy, have somebody lift 60 pounds twice a week in the gym. And then when they go to do 50 pounds at work, you know, they're going to be fine. Right. Don't just barely skate by. You know? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, for those of you that have heard it, I love movement because it's done things like make every bit of furniture in my house lighter. So yeah. I don't feel like I will ever get beat up by a couch or a crock pot again, as long as I continue to train my body.